Last time in lesson number three, we focused on two main things. We focused on multiplication by zero, also multiplication by two. Let's take a moment and review. Multiplication by zero. What we mentioned with multiplication by zero is if either of these numbers is zero, then our final answer will be zero. So five times zero is zero. Here we have a zero, this number is zero, so the final answer is zero again. Multiplication by zero, very easy to do. Second thing, multiplication by two. Multiplication by two is easiest understood by skip counting. Hopefully, you've been able to practice skip counting. And if you skip count correctly by twos, you're gonna end up doing this. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. And you can keep going if you'd like. Let's take a look at some multiplication problems involving two. Suppose we have this. Let's take a look at the very top fact, four groups of two. Well, because we have a two here, what we need to do is skip count to the fourth number in the skip counting sequence of numbers. That means that we're gonna go two, four, six, eight. That's the fourth number right there. So we're done, four times two will be eight. Obviously, with a little bit of practice, you're going to end up doing problems like this, not by using your fingers, but you're just going to count in your head silently. And then after a shorter period of time following that, you're going to end up basically just knowing these facts by heart. Here we have six times two, six groups of two, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. We know that that'll end up being 12. This last one two groups of three. Ooh, we haven't done skip counting by three. But we know that we could go ahead and switch the order here without changing the answer, and this would be the same as three groups of two. Now, with three groups of two, we can skip count quickly in our heads. And we know the answer will be six. So that is skip counting by twos. Now, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at two very practical types of skip counting. This is skip counting by 10 or multiplying by 10, and also skip counting by 5 or multiplying by 5. Let's start off with something else, though. Counting change. Counting change is something that adults need to be able to do and children need to be able to do. What do we mean by change? Well, by change, we're talking about coins, coins that have monetary value. And real quickly here, I wanna go ahead and introduce these coins to you in case you haven't had a lot of experience with them. They're going to end up being basically four main coins that you are going to end up using. These are the four main coins used today. We have the penny, the nickel, the dime, and the quarter. You may or may not know this, but a penny is worth one cent. And we usually write that this way. One and then a C with a little slash through it, one cent. A nickel is worth five pennies, so this is worth five cents. A dime is worth how many pennies? Maybe you already know. A dime is worth 10 cents, and a quarter, 25 cents. These values right here, you wanna make sure that you know, because when you're carrying money in your pocket, knowing the value of that money helps you figure out if you're able to purchase things or not. Now, what I want to do here is uh, mention to you that today's lesson, counting by tens, counting by fives, is going to help us figure out values of 
groups of nickels, also groups of dimes. Let's go ahead and begin. First thing, we know in math, and we've talked about this before, that there are many patterns. And one pattern we learned last time is that if you want to skip, if you want to multiply by two, then you learn to skip count by two. So let's write that here. To multiply by two, learn to skip count by two. It's true. We did it in our last lesson. However, let's take this sentence and change it. Because we want to multiply by 10, let's change it to multiply by 10, learn to skip count by, and what do you think this should be? Well, a 10, because the 2 becomes 10, that 2 becomes 10. In fact, as long as these two numbers are the same, this sentence should be true. So to multiply by 10, we're going to skip count by 10. And so let's go ahead and try to do that. Well, what do we do? To skip count by any number, we start at that number. So we're starting at 10. So 10 goes here. And then this next number, well, we got to go up by 10. And so we need to think to ourselves, what is 10 plus 10? And many of you know that 10 plus 10 is simply 20. And if you forgot that, of course, you could always write out the problem like this. And then you could add up units place, the tens place, get the 20. So this will be a 20. Now, to get the next place right here, we're going to take the 20. And of course, we're going to add 10 to that. And of course, if you had trouble with that, doing that in your head, feel free to always write out your math. Adding these up right here in the units place is zero. In the tens place, we get 30. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and fill in the rest of these on your own. So please hit the pause button and try to do that. And then, in just a few moments, we will go ahead and fill in the rest, see how everything went. Very good. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we end up getting for the rest of these. If we do these correctly, 30 plus 10, we're going to get 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 90 plus 10, 100. Now, of course, the list goes on, but usually, for our purposes, we'll stop at 100. Now, one thing that we want to realize is just like with the twos, there is a pattern of multiplication problems that goes right along with these numbers. What we mean by that is this. We can think of this 10 as being 1 times 10. The 20 as being 2 times 10. And you probably, of course, remember with the 2's we had 1 times 10, 2 times 10. It's going to be 3, 4, 5, etc. So, let's go ahead and write these in. There we go. And what we have here are basically answers on the top to a whole bunch of different math problems on the bottom. 8 times 10 is 80. 7 times 10 is 70. 6 times 10 is 60. Works just like what we had with the number 2. Now, what I want to do next is have us grab some of these problems that are right up here and write them out and look for what we see often in math patterns. So I'm going to go ahead and describe a few of these. I'm going to write 3 times 10 is 30. 5 times 10 50. 6 times 10 60. 8 times 10 80. Now, our goal right now is to try to see if we can find a quick way to do 
each one of these problems if we didn't know the answer and if we didn't have a list like this. And so what I want you to do is I want you to see if you can find a pattern here in our problems. So cover up the answers perhaps and see if you can find a quick way to figure out what's under my hand here by just looking at these numbers. Try that right now. Hit the pause button. Give it some thought and then we'll go through that. Very good. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have here. I think if you look at this closely, 3 times 10 is 30. One thing that you realize is that we've got the number 3 here, we've got the number 3 there. In the second one, we've got a 5, and we also have a 5 and 50. In fact, when we multiply by 10, it's like taking this first number here and copying it down, and then the 0 from the 10, putting that at the end. So 3 times 10 is 3 with a 0 at the end, 30. 5 times 10 is 5 with a 0 at the end, 50. And hopefully you recognized a pattern like that when you went through the math. Now, what I want to do is I want to give you a few problems like this to try. And so I want you to copy these down, and then I'm going to have you pause. So again, pause please, try these, then we'll go through these. All right, let's see how you did. Looking right here, we have 4 times 10. To do this quickly, without looking up here, I look at the number that's not 10, which is the 4. I write it down, and then I put a 0 after it, 40. Let's look at this one. 10 times 9. I look at the number that is not 10. That's this. I copy it down, and then I put a 0 after that. This last one is very interesting. I look at the number that's not 10. I don't have a choice. There are only two numbers right here, 10 and 10, so i got to copy one of those numbers down. Then I put a 0 after it, just like we did up here. 10 times 10, 100. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's what I want to do next. Now that we've gotten through this, and we can see how problems like this are done, I want to go ahead and have us apply this with counting change. Let's try to find the value of each group of dimes here. We have our first group going across, our second group also going across. Because these are dimes, they are 10 cents each, and there are many ways to do this problem. You may know a way already to do this problem. I want you to go ahead and take a moment and try to think it through. So please hit the pause button. See if you can figure out the value of these four dimes all together. Do that now, please. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take a look at this carefully. I want to show you two ways to do this problem. One way to do this problem is to go ahead and skip count. Now, if you learn how to skip count by 10, and if you remember it fairly well, this is going to go quickly. You can say we have 10, 20, 30, 40. 40 cents. The second way to do this problem is to go ahead and take our four dimes right here, each having a value of 10. And what do you think we can do with the tens? Well, I gave you a little clue right there. We can add those up to get the total value. And if we add these up, we're going to add first our units or our ones place. We're going to get a zero. Then we add our ones. We're going to end up getting 40. So it's 40 cents. I like skip counting better. I think it's quicker. All right, I want you to go ahead and try number two just the same way. You could do it either way. And then we'll go through number two. So pause it, please. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number two. I'm going to do it my way, which is skip counting 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So that's 60 cents. Of course, we can do it the other way also. If we do it the other way, we're going to write down 110 
for each one of the dimes. One, two, three, four, five, six tens. One, two, three, four, five, six. Add these up. Add the units first. Then add the ones. We're going to get the same answer, 60 cents. Okay. Very good. Ladies and gentlemen, what I want to do last here, go through skip counting by fives, because that will help us when we're focused on nickels. And so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Multiplying by fives. Well, of course, if we want to multiply by five, we will simply need to skip count by five. So let's go ahead and try to do that. Well, here we have the number five. And of course, to get the next number, we're going to need to go up five. So five plus five is going to give us 10. Now from 10, we're going to go up five again. 10 plus five gives us 15. I want you to go ahead and quickly fill in the rest right here on your own. And then I'll go ahead and fill those in and see how you did. So please go ahead, take a moment, pause it, and then we'll go through that. Okay, let's go ahead and fill in the rest after 15. 15 plus 5 is 20. If you got stuck with this, what you can always do is take your 15, and because we're going to add 5 to it, we can go ahead and write it this way. Make sure we line up the ones or the units. 5 plus 5, 10. Carry the 1. We're going to get 20. So there's our 20. Next, after 20, 25, 30, all the way to the end. Now, just like before, what we can do is we can go ahead and say that this 5 is really one group of 5, two groups of 5, all the way down to the end. Okay, now that we've got that written in, let's go ahead and see if we can find some pattern or maybe several patterns in these problems that we have right here. Why don't we go ahead and choose some of these? I'm going to choose these four right here and write these out. 3 times 5, 15. 4 times 5, 20. And the next two. Now that we have these written down, what I want you to choose is your mission, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to see if you can figure out some patterns that we have in these problems. So take a moment to do that. Of course, pause, and then we'll go through that briefly. Okay. What do you notice about these four problems right here? Well, one thing that you probably notice is that each one of these answers ends in a digit that is either a 5 or a 0. And that helps us keep track of the pattern as we go across here. Ends in a 5, ends in a 0, 5, 0, 5, 0, 5, 0 all the way across. Okay, with that already understood, hopefully, let's go ahead and try some examples. Now, how do we do our examples? Well, we do our examples basically by learning to skip count by fives, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. A lot of times students will ask me the question, how can I learn to do this well? And what I always recommend for students is Perhaps before you go to sleep at night, you try skip counting by twos, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and you'll get faster with practice. Same thing with fives, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, etc. Same thing with tens. And as you learn these, if you practice them just a little bit at nighttime, I think you will be pleasantly surprised at how quickly you learn these 
extremely well. Let's go ahead and take a look at some examples and see how these go. Okay, I want you to go ahead and try these three problems on your own, and then we'll go ahead and take a look and see how things turned out. So pause the video, please. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at these. Here we have two times five. And so if we choose to skip count by fives, and notice I said the word choose there. We'll go through what happens if you don't. If you choose to skip count by fives, you can say it's two groups of five or two fives. If you count by fives, of course we get five, 10. So this will be an answer of 10. But now I wanna go through the other thing. What if you decide to be different? And instead of counting by fives, what if you decide to count by twos? Well, if you count by twos, you're gonna to need to count five twos. So you're gonna count two, four, six, eight, ten. Same answer we got. So the point is you can actually count by either one of these numbers. By the way, I've been calling these numbers. Just so you know, these numbers right here that you multiply, these two numbers are called factors both of them and your answer to a multiplication product um, to a multiplication problem rather is called the product all right let's go ahead and take a look at the second one here I'm going to count by fives 5 10 15 that's three of them so this will be 15 here I don't know how to count by sixes yet so I'm going to count by fives but I gotta count six of them. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Hopefully you got those answers. Your worksheets will give you a chance to practice these through, of course. Okay, let's go ahead and finish things up. What I have here are two groups of nickels. Got three of them up here. Remember a nickel worth five cents. We've got five of them down here. And what we want to do is find the total value of each group of nickels. What I want you to do is use what you know about skip counting and about addition and see if you can figure out the final answers here. So pause it please, give this your best try, and then we'll go through this. Very good. Let's go ahead and take a look at this here. I'm going to do this by skip counting. I enjoy skip counting. Here I'm going to count by 5, so 5, 10, 15, that should be 15 cents. Now if you don't do this by skip counting, a second way to do it is to take these three values right here, and of course you could add these up. 5 plus 5 is 10, 10 plus 5 is 15. Same answer. Hopefully you got that one right. Let's take a look at the last one. Skip counting, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So that should be 25 cents. And that can be also checked or done by adding up the fives like we did here. All right, let's go ahead and take a moment and recap. When we multiply by 10, we go to the number that's not 10 and we put a zero at the end. That's the easy way to multiply by 10. When we multiply by five, skip counting is gonna be the great way to do that. And skip counting by fives, I think, is gonna be one of the easiest skip countings that you're gonna actually learn. Now, next time. Next time we're gonna focus in on multiplying by three, so that'll be skip counting by three that we learn to do. Also, multiplying by nine. That'll be skip counting by nine. Now, something that's going to be very helpful with skip counting by 9 is to make sure that you can count backwards from 10. So you can go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And even if you start at 6, you can go 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Whatever digit you start at, you can go to the previous digits all the way down to 1. That'll be very helpful with skip counting 
by nines. But that'll be coming up in lesson number five. Now you should be all ready for the worksheet. Please give it your very best effort. And then lesson number five will be next.